Welcome to the Behind the Song series. Uh, we're talking about the song Whisper My Name today, and I have the talented Mark Nestler with me. Um, he is one of my absolute favorite songwriters in town and um, idols. <laughs> Such an amazing writer. Um, and everyone I talk to you about um, loves you. So that's a, you know, not only talented, but lovable. <laughs> everyone loves you. But uh, we, you know, this. This song is like a really unusual one to do a behind the song series about because you almost just don't even know really what to say. It doesn't quite seem right to have this behind the song just like all the others because the song kind of just stands on its own, I think. But I uh, couldn't not talk about it because other people are starting to hear it and connect with it. And so uh, we at least want to acknowledge, you know, kind of how we wrote it and, you know, just what we were hoping to accomplish with it. So, yeah. I mean, I remember you coming in with the idea of, you know, a mother having lost a child. And um, it, well, I guess you you tell kind of the idea of just that you you were wanting to give moms this sort of validation, you know, you yeah, said I it. Yeah, any kind of separation from a child, you know, whether it be a miscarriage or abortion or whatever, or just, even some accident that may happen while they're very young, I just think that's just such a difficult thing to go through. It's very unnatural, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, you know, that there is peace, you know, that comes from only our Heavenly Father. And that, you know, when a when a child is lost that young, they automatically go to heaven. And, and I feel like a mother would want to know their child is okay. Hmm. And I thought, you know, why not write a song where we really try to, through divine intervention, imagine what the child would want to say. Mm -hmm. And it was our first write, which was <laughs> yeah. kind of amazing because most of the time, you know, you kind of want to get to know the co-writer, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We talked know. for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember us talking about how shallow a lot of the, the songs are these days that you hear um, written in this town. And once I realized you were willing to go there, you know, I think we were just led by the Holy Spirit. And he led us to whisper my name. Yeah, and yeah, because we didn't, we didn't have that title. And I think for me, from what you said, I, I've had, you know, a lot of friends that have dealt with, you know, miscarriage. And then also I've known people who have dealt with abortion. And obviously they're, they're two very, very separate things. Um, but in my opinion, you know, politics and everything aside, like what they have in common is grief and right. a lot of complicated emotions, um, loss. And, you know, for instance, in the case of, of a miscarriage, you know, you, if your child got to be born and then passes away, you get a tremendous amount of social support, um, and you can talk about it and mourn it out loud. But if you've had a miscarriage, you might not feel that you can mourn so loudly. Um, and, and I don't even know if you feel that you can mourn to your husband, you know, because they, they you know, and not, not to make assumptions, but they might not understand the complicated emotions of mm -hmm. that it is a real loss and that that mom had ideas and, and dreams and attachment. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, too, you know, my my feeling is is also that with with moms that that go through abortion, the the shame and the the difficulty that comes with making that decision, um, the loss is still there. And I think that that's a part that society doesn't understand is that women don't come out of that unscathed. 
and they don't come out of it without feeling attachment. It, it's like you said before, it's unnatural. Um, and so I just, I know that we really wanted to be able to write a song that gave a lot of different women in a lot of different circumstances the comfort of just that, the few minutes of like that connectivity with this child in heaven speaking to you, mm-hmm. saying, I'm okay, you're okay, you're loved, essentially, you know? And I mean, it's, it's really wonderful to see some of these women that I don't even know starting to reach out about the song um, because they're finding that peace. And yeah, it, of course it doesn't, it doesn't solve or change anything, but it, what it does is it says, you're not alone, mm-hmm. you're loved, you know, anything that's happened to you, you know, it, yeah. yeah, so I, I, th- I think that's... Yeah. I sometimes feel like it's more than a song. It feels like an answered prayer. Yes, I would agree with that. Uh, it's what God wants you to hear. Absolutely. Uh, and there is redemption and mm-hmm. you know, peace and love to be found. Um, I agree. If you just you know put your faith in Him, and and I think too the we were really careful about the the language. We wanted it to sound conversational and childlike. So that was we kept coming up against that we would say something and really oh that's too profound it's not profound (laughs) enough it was just this delicate dance the whole time and even making the the melodies a little bit innocent and childlike almost like i remember that being a challenge and of course we didn't even have a title which is not usual we normally know where we're going but this one we knew just where we you know the sentiment so that was that was the challenge with that one but it ended up it ended up being more than I think we saddled up for that day when we... Yeah. And your recording of it is just amazing. It's just so Thank beautiful. You. I was listening to it today and I'm just like, wow, there is this bigger than life, like open door to the other side <laughs> that I feel when I hear the song. Thank you. So. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for writing it with me, for being willing to go there that day, so to speak. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to play the song the way that it was originally written on guitar so you can hear where it all started. (laughs) I'm going to get it eventually. (laughs) You're good. The chords are just so tricky. I know. I know it. (laughs) You wrote that. (laughs) Oh, man. about Just to See You Smile. It's a song that I absolutely love and so many people love it. Um, tell us about the writing process. Who'd you write it with? Well, I wrote it with Tony Martin and we had actually gotten together uh, 
that particular afternoon to finish a song for the session, the demo session the next day. Huh. And uh, I was just so moved by this title, you know, just to see you smile. And I thought, I gotta run this by Tony, you know, before we dive into the other song. And, and I said, Tony, I, said, I got this title and this melody and so I just played him the, you know, the chorus melody right. and sang the title. And, and as you know, that melody kind of, you know, goes up and down, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I said, is that too sing songy? You know, and he said, to the tune of about a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> to the tune of about a million dollars. And so we, uh, we started, you know, trying to write some lyric to it. And of course, Tony always pulls from my personal experiences. I was in a uh, not so good relationship at the time, and and he knew enough about that uh, relationship to kind of get inside my head. And, hmm. and, and that, you had known each other for a long time. We had known each other yeah. a couple of years. Right. Uh, not that long. Right. We've been right now for like 24 years. Still regularly, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, he, he told me the other day that, uh, I don't know how he knew this, but he's a guy that, you know, he's a numbers guy, but he said it was a tenth song that we wrote. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so we finished the song. Uh, I remember it was late in the year and the days were short and it actually got dark in the room and my publisher, Jerry Crutchfield, came upstairs and he opened the door and he reached for the light switch and Tony and I yelled, don't turn the light off. You're killing you know, it. Because we were in the zone. Yeah. And Jerry said, okay, well, all right. Uh, just be sure to lock up, you know. And so we finished the song sitting in the dark and the next day we went into, uh, you know, the tracking session and uh, Chip said, y'all finish that song? I'm like, no, we got another song that we just wrote last night. And we played it for Chip and he just, I mean, he loved it. And so the guys charted it out and we, uh, we tracked it. And Wanda Vick just happened to be there. She was one of the session players and she plays a lot of different instruments. Yeah. And, uh, Chip said, Wanda, did you bring your banjo today? She's like, yep, got it in my car, you know. He said, go get it. And I just remember, you know, how excited I was, but, you know, the other musicians were kind of like, banjo, you know, because this was before the Dixie Chicks. Right, right. But I felt like because of my bluegrass roots, the banjo was going to just lay perfectly mm -hmm. on that track. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, when she started picking the banjo, I mean, it was just magic. And uh, you know, I sang it, and we mixed it, and sent it over to a few people that that passed on it. Uh, but about two months later, McGraw heard it, and uh, he just really loved the song. Yeah. Uh, he and Faith were expecting their first, you know, child and, and and it was just a perfect time and you know perfect song for him mm -hmm. you know and it ended up being a six week number one kind of bittersweet for me though because uh, my dad uh, you know passed away during that mm -hmm. time but he did get to uh, see the chart you know and the song at number one just oh, days before we went into that's a wonderful. And I just feel like that was, you know, such a blessing. Yeah. From God to be able to share that moment with I, him. I get you that. Know. He probably had been following your career for his whole, <clears throat> you know, your whole yeah. life, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, so the song is one that just keeps giving, you mm -hmm. know. I what I love is that uh, obviously that turn in the second verse. Um, doesn't it doesn't go as you think it's gonna go um, with their story because you guys wrote it in a way that up until your verse chorus you think 
He just loves her. He'll do anything. And then the second verse kind of just like totally takes you by surprise mm -hmm. in the best way. Did you map that out for the non-songwriters? <laughs> How does, do you know, do you write it and then you go, let's make this interesting or <clears throat> like I've written with you. So I know you must have thought that before, but what, what was that? No, actually, you know, I was just telling my story at mm -hmm, that point mm -hmm. because I remember uh, the day she came up and <laughs> to me with him, him. yeah, yeah, to this right. other guy named David, and uh, and I just shook his hand. And just I told her, I said, I'm happy for you, right? You know, even though it was killing me inside, right, right, just to but, see that. But I just wanted her to be happy, mm. yeah, and. You know, Tracy Bird, I was on the road with him at the time, and and uh, he saw what I was going through, and he asked me one day, why do you keep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, said, hanging around and going through this, you know, with this girl? And uh, I said, I don't know, you know? And I thought about that when I got back home to Nashville, I said, why is that? And that's when the title, you know. Just to see you smile. Came, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to see her smile. And so. It's so wonderful. It's such a simple, it's a, it's a song that just like has, it just unfolds as you listen to it. It just absolutely unfolds. And it's, I mean, it's songwriter goals, you know? Like I, I, I certainly try to have songs that, that have that same experience where it's not, by the course, you kind of go, okay, I've, I've gotten what I can get out of this. And it still, it carries on in the, I mean, it's the whole, the whole song top to bottom yeah. is, uh, has depth to it. It's just, it's wonderful. Well, the course kind of stands on its own. Right. And it's not really gender specific. No. Or age specific. Right. It's, you know, it's just, if you've got somebody in your life that, that, you know, you want to make happy. Right. It's that, worth all the yeah. right. You know, that's your song. Totally. And a lot of people would think it was a happy song until they listened to the verses. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, thank you for not listening to the verses early on. <laughs> but you guys said it to such uh, the music. I, I, was it you that was telling me? Did you guys write it with that up just to see? Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah, that's that, such that a all, cool choice. You know, was inspired by my bluegrass roots because I played banjo. Okay. Uh, when I was younger, me and my dad and mom and sister would travel around to the bluegrass festivals. And, and so I was bringing some of my bluegrass roots into that song. And, I love that. And just my love for a country music song, you know, a country lyric. You know, just that song just embodies everything that yeah. I wanted to put in a song. And fortunately, Tim appreciated that and I always say a song is just a song until there's an artist that takes it out there you know yeah to the people and uh, he was the perfect artist it's it's very believable for him he definitely I mean I don't know him but he it's very believable that he would be that guy just to see mm -hmm. her smile he, he has that kind of nobility about him that you yeah. could kind of it's believable but it's a great song thank you yeah well Thank you for watching this. Mark Nestler, one of my favorite, favorite people to write slash, mostly learn, learn slash write from. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you next time.